Scams are sadly everywhere and very abundant. As technology has improved, so have the means in which scammers seek out innocent victims. Thankfully, ways to get around and avoid these scams have also improved. In this list, I'll explain the types of common scams out there, but also how you should go about avoiding them. Amazing! Number 10. Motorbike Rental Damage Renting a motorbike is tons of fun. Given that you already know how to ride one, it can be a very relaxing way to go from place to place when on vacation somewhere. However, falling victim to a damaged or stolen motorbike rental will quickly put a damper on that fun, as it will usually lead you to having to pay an additional fee for the lost or stolen rental. What will make the matter worse is having all that happen to you only to find out that the entire ordeal was planned by the renter in order to squeeze more money out of you. Oftentimes, when renters rent to tourists or visitors, they will hire someone to follow them and either damage or steal the motorbike. Avoiding this fairly common traveler scam can be avoided in a number of ways. To avoid having it stolen, you should use your own lock rather than the one provided to you by the owner, as they may have made copies of it. In addition to that, Refraining from telling them the hotel you will be staying at will add some security to your rental. As far as damages go, take a picture of your bike before you rent it, as evidence to its prior condition so they don't charge you for pre-existing damages. Number 9. Fishing This simple tactic has proven to work time and time again, and it can be executed in various ways. The most common of the bunch have been via emails, texts, personal messages through social media accounts like Twitter, Facebook, and fake ads on websites. In the case of emails, texts, and personal social media messages, the fisher will use the scare tactic of masquerading as your bank, or any company in which you have private information stored onto, such as Facebook, Google, or eBay. They will ask you to verify your information by sending them your credit card info, or clicking the link they have provided or your account will be closed. The visibility of the fake ad method of phishing will depend on the security of the site you are on, but to do this, fishers will buy an ad spot on some popular site add a tempting fake ad image, and attach a link to it that directs users to a phishing site that copies all of the saved info you have added to the browser as cookies. To avoid falling victim to this scam, make sure not to click links sent to you by a suspicious source or ads that seem too good to be true. Furthermore, you can report them to the anti-phishing working group, either through their site or by forwarding the messages to them. Number 8. RFID Blocking Wallets in the retail world, RFID, or Radio Frequency Identification Enabled Devices, are used to read credit cards in order to tender transactions. Whether you are swiping it through the magnet strip, inserting the chip end into the machine, or hovering a card or smartphone over a contactless credit card reader, RFID technology is being used to transfer information from one device to another. Sadly, this same technology has also been used to steal information without permission. Through the use of an RFID antenna reader, thieves can copy any information being communicated via RFID within its nearby radius and save it onto any storage device for use on online purchases. Some have even gone as far as buying credit card duplicating hardware, moving the information onto it, and then copying onto blank cards with magnet strips. Due to the simple nature of this scam, its frequency is enough to make you never want to go outside. However, avoiding it can be as simple as purchasing a new wallet. Whether you're on Amazon or shopping at a physical store, look for wallets that have RFID blocking technology built in. The fabric inserted into the wallet is not at all cumbersome, so you won't be left with any extra bulk, and they end up costing around the same price as any other wallet. Not only will you save yourself from 21st century pickpocketing, but you also have a new wallet. It's a win-win. Number 7. Premium Rate Phone Call Scam Caller ID is a very helpful tool. It can help you know who to expect on the other line, avoid unwanted sales pitches, and it can be your number one pal in avoiding exuberantly high rates for simply answering. Years ago, area codes were created for dozens of islands back in the 90s, and they were all given the country code of 1, which is the same country code as the United States. They were never really used and have now been adopted by scammers in order to trick U.S. citizens into answering long-distance calls. Any number coming from 809 268 284 649 876 473 or 900 will ring you up with the great news that you have won a trip to some island or stay at a fancy hotel. First of all, no, you didn't, as these types of calls are not legally allowed. Secondly, the enticing pitch exists only to keep you on the line longer, and most importantly, you are now being charged for simply being on the phone. Don't worry though, you have 30 seconds to one minute before any charges are placed. 
so hang up as soon as you can. Number 6. Tech Support Scams Due to its very simple execution, there are multiple ways scammers try to find victims for this common tech support trick. If you receive a call or email from someone claiming to work for Microsoft, Norton, Apple, etc., saying they have detected a virus on your device, hang up or delete the email. They will use scare tactics in order to coerce you into paying a fee for removing the virus, and even try to take your IP address, which is essentially the social security number of your device. What they can do with the IP address varies, but it is mostly used as a fake ID for hackers on the off chance that they get caught, tracing the illegal action to you rather than them. On that same note, any ads you see claiming to have found viruses on your device should also be ignored. If you entice the ad, it will prompt you to install a file under the guise that it will wipe your device clean, which it will, completely clean. It will leave nothing left and ultimately turn your device into a hunk of plastic and metal with absolutely no software to run anything. Number 5. Overbook or Closed Hotels this one occurs when you're in a cab, on your way to a hotel when the cab driver will turn to you and tell you that the hotel is either completely booked or closed down. They then offer you an alternative hotel to take you to. What the cab driver is actually looking for is to either take you to a hotel located farther away so they can charge you more for the drive, take you to an expensive hotel that pays them for bringing new customers, or both. Some added planning will help you avoid this scam. You can call your hotel in advance to see if they are open, ask them if they have rooms available, Book it and then ask if they offer some sort of shuttle service. If they do not offer a shuttle service, tell your driver to take you to the hotel anyways, even if they continue insisting that it is closed or overbooked. Number 4. Disaster Scam Emails and passwords have proven to be the easiest things for hackers to get a hold of. If you want further proof, head over to the Have I Been Pwned website, type in your email, and let Have I Been Pwned find out if your email has fallen into the hands of someone else by checking every site that has fallen victim to an online security breach, and then checking to see if the email you have entered can be associated to it. Once hackers have managed to slip their way into your email, they need to find a way to profit from it, which is where this disaster scam comes into play. They will take advantage of a big natural disaster by posing as you and email the people in your contacts asking for money to help you get out of the dire situation. So if you get a call from a friend one day asking if you are okay and how much money you need, tell them to ignore the email and contact your email host about the breach. Number 3. Free Trial Scam Free trials are great. They allow you to test out services like Netflix and Hulu without having to commit. However, some free trials out there are created specifically to scam you out of some money. A popular free trial product that uses this shady tactic is Cleanse Extreme a pill that advertises as being able to do just about everything. What this product does within its fine print has been utilized by thousands of companies like it. They will hide vital information regarding the circumstances of the trial within the fine print by coloring it a similar color to the background in order for it to be nearly invisible at a quick glance. Furthermore, they'll hide any mention of pricing by spelling out the numbers and leaving out the dollar sign because that's what customers will be looking for when reading. The most obvious way to avoid this is by reading the fine print thoroughly. If that is not something you've been doing, head over to the Tiny Eye site and reverse search the images used in the ad. If results pop up showing that image or images have been used previously for other things, then what you are looking at is a scam and you should exit it immediately. Number 2. Online Shopping Scams eBay has thankfully placed a lot of security measures to ensure that users will not be scammed on either end, but that doesn't mean it is 100% safe. A common scam that occurs on eBay are sellers pretending to still have an item available after an auction has ended, and refraining from disclosing specifications about the item posted. If at some point while on eBay you receive a personal message from a seller telling you that the highest bidder has dropped his or her offer, and the item is now open for you to take it, ignore it as it is more than likely a scam for the seller to get paid double for an item that will only go to one person. Similarly, if the seller has not specified the size of the item listed, look for another product or send a message to the seller asking about the size and if they can send you some images of it. This extra step will ensure that you are purchasing the item you are expecting and not some miniature or faulty version of it, which has happened numerous times to various people in the past. Number 1. The Dynamic Currency Conversion This has been touted by many banks as a very convenient way to go about buying items and withdrawing money from ATMs when you are in a location that has a different form of currency than yours. However, with that convenience, you will ultimately lose some money. Say you are in France and are looking to withdraw 60 euros at an ATM, 
or purchase something that is sold for 60 euros. Upon purchasing the item or withdrawing at the ATM, the teller or machine will ask you if you would like to be charged in euros or in US dollars. Choosing to go for euros would mean you will be paying or withdrawing the 60 euros, which equates to roughly 66 US dollars. But if you opt for the USD option, the dynamic currency conversion will kick in, along with a service fee, and bring the total to nearly 70 US dollars. The amount will vary depending on the country you are in, but in the end you end up losing money by opting for the bank provided DCC, which not only already has bad exchange rates, but also has a service fee tacked onto it for making the bank do the conversion. Another ATM scam you should be prepared for can be found in a previous video we've made, so make sure to check that one out as well, as it will help keep you and your money safe. Which scam surprised or scared you the most? Which tips are you thinking about implementing? Are there any you think we left out? Comment below with your answers, and if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like it. Thanks for watching.